Well, hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what I'm kind of considering a miracle product. I have heard about it, but it's not something honestly that we use a lot in dermatology here in the US per se. It's just not an ingredient that I'm really, it's really just not, it never been something that I have necessarily recommended, but I started doing a little bit more research on this, even tried it out myself, and I definitely wanted to make a video about it for you, and that is ichthamol ointment. Many of you have asked me about this, especially those of you maybe in Europe or the UK, because I think it's honestly a lot more popular there or more frequently recommended there. What the heck is this? Uh, it's actually sulfonated shale oil. Basically comes from rocks and it's distilled into two fractions, a clear fraction and a dark fraction. Both fractions have been shown to be beneficial for the skin in helping for a variety of skin issues and skin conditions. This particular ingredient, it has a variety of beneficial properties for the skin. It's antibacterial and antifungal. It also is anti-inflammatory and it has an anti-itch effect. In my opinion, using it personally, I think the anti-itch effect and the anti-inflammatory effects of this product, just in my personal anecdotal experience using it, are its superpowers. It also has an analgesic property, meaning it helps reduce discomfort. There are also some in vitro studies, which again, to remind you guys in vitro means just kind of looking at cells in a dish some in vitro studies also suggest that this ingredient helps with growth factors so that may have a healing effect as well it's been shown to help with healing of ulcers in a randomized controlled trial i mentioned it's anti-inflammatory one study showed that shale oil which is what ichthamol is four percent was as effective as 0.5% hydrocortisone cream, but without the potential side effects of topical hydrocortisone cream, namely an increased risk of skin infections. Hydrocortisone cream, if you've ever used it, it does have a risk of skin infections. And with long-term use, you have a risk of um, what's called steroid atrophy, where you can get stretch marks. Steroids can delay healing. So it may be a better alternative for some types of itch. This ingredient has successfully been used in dermatology for eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, and also a condition called hydradenitis suppurativa. Probably the most anti-inflammatory and antibacterial effects of this ingredient help with uh, hydradenitis suppurativa. As a reminder, I do have a video all about this skin condition, so if you deal with that, definitely check that video out. I didn't realize this, but it also has been used for treating ear infections. Now, not this particular ointment, specific ear preparation of the ingredient. It's also recommended for bug bites, and I definitely can see why that would help. Both the British Academy of Dermatology and the European Dermatologic Forum point to ichthamol as a additional treatment for eczema, not a standalone or, you know, first line treatment, but definitely a beneficial ingredient, likely for its anti-inflammatory effects, its antimicrobial effects, and its anti-itch properties, which I have to tell you, my personal anecdote using it are pretty remarkable. It's speculated that the benefits of ichthamol may come from the sulfur components that are in the preparation. A lot of the research on this ingredient is like maybe from the 30s or 40s. It's been around since the 1880s, but I don't know, it just kind of somehow fell out of common use, common practice to, to incorporate this ingredient. I really think it needs to have a renaissance. As somebody who has eczema, I personally have found that this particular ingredient is very effective for killing the itch sensation. Uh, but a word of warning about this, it smells foul, Ugh. like nauseatingly foul. And this is what it looks like. So you have to be careful. It does stain the skin. I have a little itchy patch of hand eczema actually right now. Um, it does stain the skin a little bit, not permanently, but if you get this on fabrics, it will stain that as well. It's basically the ingredient in an ointment, so it's really greasy. But man, if you are dealing with itchy hand eczema, maybe from washing your hands a lot, or you deal with dishydrotic hand eczema, definitely check this out because it really just instantly takes that itch away. And it helps 
form a barrier on the skin to reduce water loss. If you get bikini waxes, you need this. Why? It is a miracle ingredient, in my opinion, for bikini waxes because when you get a bikini wax, first of all, it's painful when they do that. Oftentimes, they will immediately apply like a steroid cream to reduce the inflammation and to decrease you know, irritation with bikini waxing. This is a better alternative in my opinion because it has an analgesic effect to kind of calm down that pain. And it also helps to, uh, it's antibacterial. See, steroid creams aren't antibacterial. A lot of people develop little acne-like breakouts. Sometimes they can get little skin infections. So this is a great option if you do um, a, a wax. The antibacterial property is really beneficial, especially for the bikini wax, because you know a common complication of that is a couple of days later, you might get little pimples, and sometimes you get little skin infections. This is a great ingredient to use. And the other benefit of this is that a lot of people get uh, itch as the hair is either growing back in or just a few days after the fact. And the compulsion to want to scratch, it can be quite strong. If you just put this on right away, it takes it away almost immediately. Now again, it does stain fabric, so you have to be aware of that. Let it, you know, kind of soak in. It will get on your underwear, so use you know, dark colored underwear that you don't care about, but it is wonderful. It just makes the post wax process much better. If you are somebody who gets a wax and then it turns red, you get breakouts, it itches, all of those things, try using this because it pretty much takes away all of that nuisance related to getting a bikini wax. I have been super impressed with it in that regard. The other situation where this is super beneficial, in my opinion, is for bug bites, including mosquito bites, which I live in Texas, Houston, it's like the mosquito capital of the world. Lots of mosquito bites, they itch. And one thing that happens, especially in young children, is that when you get a bite, of course everybody wants to scratch it but you can carry bacteria under your nails. As you scratch, you introduce that bacteria into the bug bite that can lead to infections like impetigo, which often happens in young children, but anybody can, can get that. And then just the action of scratching, it can thicken the little bite, make it discolored and stick around longer. And as you scratch, it feels good right away, but the downstream effect of that is it kind of excites the nerves and the little immune cells in the skin in that area to release more itching signals and it just makes for a more persistent stubborn itch. Now one of my tips for itch is always to apply chilled moisturizer, but I'm telling you this is another thing to have in your arsenal. It's great to have in your first aid kit for when you get bug bites. It's just very soothing and takes away that itch and I really like that it has an antibacterial, antimicrobial effect as well to reduce the risk of you getting a skin infection on impaired skin from a bug bite. You may be wondering like, can you use this on the face? You certainly could. Whether or not you will want to is a whole other story because it's a brown, stinky, greasy ointment. Most people don't enjoy putting that kind of thing on their face, but if you have seborrheic dermatitis, it's really flaky and itchy, it's just making you miserable, you might wanna put a little you know, pea-sized amount, just the areas that are most problematic, maybe around your nose. You may find that it's very soothing and helps calm that down quite a bit. If you're the type of person who tolerates greasy ointments on your skin, then I think you'll have no issue with it. You know, a lot of people, for example, like to do slugging or whatever. If you, so if you tolerate putting Vaseline on your face, the consistency of this you likely will tolerate, but the smell is foul and it will transfer to your sheets, your pillowcases and that kind of thing. So I can't imagine honestly putting this on the face, uh, but you know, if you're motivated to, it's not contraindicated there. It is safe to use in children. So if your kids get bug bites, this is definitely something to think about putting on to keep them from scratching and help them heal faster. And I wanna remind you guys that it's also been shown to be helpful for hydradenitis superativa, those breakouts in the armpit which can also be itchy and uncomfortable. So if you feel like you're getting one, this can help because not only do you have the benefits of it being anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial, those things alone are really beneficial for hydradenitis superativa, but because it's kind of greasy, it's also lubricating. And one thing that can set off 
hydratinitis. It's actually just friction on the skin. That's why it's advised to wear loose fitting clothing uh, and avoid restrictive fabrics because that friction can actually just aggravate things. Here, this product will offer a little bit of lubrication in that area and just really help calm down the irritation. If you have eczema, I would also consider this. I mean, it's like I already mentioned it for hand eczema. If you get numular eczema, otherwise known as discoid dermatitis, I have a video on that, by the way. Those round patches of eczema, very, very, very itchy. This, I'm telling you, this is, this is a great product to consider to just help quiet down that itch. It's been really helpful for the hands. Uh, I mentioned hand eczema, but a lot of people deal with the same type of eczema on their feet. It's called pomphalox or dyshydrosis. Definitely consider this because you have, not only do you have the soothing properties of the um, ichthamol ingredient itself, the, sh the uh, sulfonated shale oil, but you also have just the petrolatum vehicle, which really helps to put the brakes on trans epidermal water loss. I'm chuckling because I always say that, put the brakes on trans epidermal water loss. But that's really a main stay in getting control of these eczematous skin conditions like eczemas, dyshydrosis, nonmular eczema. I'm telling you guys, this is one that you definitely need to, to consider. Well studied for safety, shown to be efficacious for a variety of skin diseases. It's just not like a standard recommendation, probably because honestly, it is so messy and unpleasant to use both the texture, the appearance, it stains things and it smells foul. But sometimes certain skin conditions, they make you quite miserable and you may be willing to put up with those properties of this. And if it's in a small, limited area, then it may be just what you need, which is why I wanted to make this video because it's not an expensive product. This particular one was sold at Rite Aid. I got it on Amazon. It's 10% ichthamol. You can get it at Walgreens. It's probably gonna be over by the section where they have stuff for bug bites in the store, or you can buy it online, like anything these days you can buy online, which is kind of scary sometimes. Anyways, yeah, let me know in the comments because over the years I have gotten questions to cover this. And honestly, like I said, it's just not something that we commonly use so much here. I mean, maybe I'm sure there are germs out there who do. It's just not like, you know, a super, talked about ingredient or anything. While it's been around since the 1880s, I think it's just kinda is something that people have forgotten about. Things like this I love. They're to the point, effective, evidence-based, and affordable. You know, there are so many products like that in the drugstore that are beneficial for things. I should actually do a video sometimes rounding up some of the best, like, stuff that you can buy in the drugstore that's not sold necessarily under the umbrella of like a skincare product, but things that are more like medicinals that are, ver are beneficial for a variety of things. I've mentioned in other videos like how beneficial Dom Burroughs is for things that are like rashes that are weepy, like poison ivy. Uh, a lot of you guys have discovered my love of carousel foot ointment. That's often sold, you know, over by, by the foot fungus stuff, but that is a great product, beneficial for not only callus, but if you're prone to uh, athlete's foot, it's a good ingredient. It helps, you know, kind of cut down on the scaly stuff, allows for better penetration. I should do a video on, on my top, like secret, derm secret, products in the drugstore that nobody else is talking about. All right, y'all, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.